Welcome to Flashpoint TV. It's September the 8th. There's already breaking news at the time of this show. I'll get into that. I want to welcome you in. I want to thank every single listener who's been tuning in for this show. We are, gosh, we're over 15,000 views a month. Thanks to you listening on Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku TV. This tells us that the content we're putting out there is resonating with you. We want this to be the place where your breakthrough story takes root, germinates, and grows. And the way we're going to do that today, on this very day, is we're going to learn two more incredible breakthrough stories that are different in, co in context, but the similarities run through each story as we come to find out. So I want to welcome you. My name's Austin. As I said, we have a ritual for every single show that we kick off and I'm going to start that right now. And it's the obvious starting place is to invite you in to this very moment that whatever's happening today has already happened. You got some stuff going through your mind. You got some, maybe you got some deadlines. Maybe the year has not gone the way you wanted to. And I want you to embrace whatever is. And let's step into this moment. I want to bring your attention to the inaugural, the release of the very new as of last night, like, let's see, like maybe like around 12 midnight, I'm up. I'm like, man, I want to get this done. And I, I spent the time to produce this hourglass, not the glass, but the concept of pause and breathe and step into the present moment that life is consistently unfolding. And this hourglass, every time we do it, every show, it has a different meaning. And we understand that the future hasn't happened, but if you're like me, you might have be trying to get into that future grain of sand more uh, quicker. You want to get up here quicker, or, or perhaps you're looking back at the glory days saying, man, if only I could get back there when it was the good old days. As Ben Franklin said, the present age was never the golden age. So collectively speaking, what is Ben saying? Ben is saying that we fantasize about the future. We fantasize about the good old days. Meanwhile, the sand is only flowing through right now. And the more we can dial into that, we are on the edge of creation. And as my friend Gordon Melville said, the long bearded guy, he said, well, what if we could tilt the hourglass and we could add some intention as life unfolds? So I can't manipulate the sand from falling, but I could maybe set some intention and send it in the direction. So let this, let this resonate with you right now, that whatever's happened today, this week, this month, this year, maybe you tilt the hourglass of your life in a different direction, not completely knowing how it's gonna land, but knowing that if your thoughts and your emotions start to move in the right direction, that a whole nother perspective can open up for you. Will you do it? Type in yes. Type in yes, it's time for a reinvention, whether you're re, re, uh, returning or you're hearing the show for the first time, you're here for a reason. And I want to highlight Power of Pure Presence, our new show every Sunday at 10 a.m. This Sunday on September 11th for the 11th episode, we're going to be honoring September 11th in the only way we can with the Power of Pure Presence. So pause and breathe. Step into this moment with me. Let's co-create. Your shares are important. You are important. Your presence is important here. Even though you're not on the show, we can feel you and you matter. I'm going to put this right over here. The next thing we do is we highlight the Thomas Edison hourglass. Not the hourglass, although it could be. Oh, by the way, let me share this. We have Dr. Smiley in the green room. I can see him. He's smiling at me now. But if you turn this sideways, what does that look like? Infinity. It never stops. The light bulb. This light bulb was purchased at Menlo Park, New Jersey. The very site where Thomas Edison and his team labored 
for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours. And the qu quote goes, I did not fail. When asked, well, how did you feel to fail 10,000 times? He said, I did not fail. I successfully created 10,000 ways in which the light bulb could not be created. And I have a special surprise for you today, a special quote today. But this is the replica of the light bulb that was in use for 100 years, plus or minus, and lit up the world. So is it worth it? Say yes. Thomas Edison, I think this is appropriate today. When, when Thomas Edison's last words, Thomas Edison's last words, hours before his death, he emerged from a coma. He said, it's very beautiful over here. Just prior to this show, Queen Elizabeth, 96, has left this earthly plane. So while millions will mourn, just remember this quote from Thomas Edison. It's very beautiful over here. And Queen Elizabeth made the lives of many people beautiful on this earthly plane. So just realize that wherever she is, let's trust it's beautiful for her. So I'm just going to pause for a moment before we get into our guest, just to honor Queen Elizabeth, just a moment of silence for the incredible life that she's been able to live and the legacy that no doubt she will leave behind for centuries to come. And that's Flashpoint, that's pure legacy. So will you pause with me right now for a moment? I want to thank you for that. But you're here. I'm here. I want to invite you to share this. We have two incredible guests for you today. And this, this first gentleman I'm going to bring on, I want to bring him on quickly because I want to get as much time as, as we can. This gentleman, aside from I go into the bio notes, of course, I can read and I'm going to share the, the stuff that's in text. But this is a, an individual that is prolific. It's an individual that embodies um, determining what needs to be done and then doing it. Where can I serve? Where can I bridge the gap? Like I almost, as I think about him, uh, I think he really bridges the gap for people who have a story and they don't know really what to do, how to get it out there. So you're going to learn about the keep smiling movement, which we're going to get into that. And you're going to learn about all the other things that he does, that he does. He's considered a Renaissance man a humanitarian and an accomplished serial entrepreneur. I, if, if I were to go through everything, I'd be here for an hour just introducing him. He's established success with the Umbrella Syndicate, perfect publishing and absolute entertainment. He is a social proof celebrity event photographer. He has rubbed elbows with people that you probably would love to meet, people you probably follow on YouTube. He, he's rubbed elbows with them and he uh, helps create social proof. Uh, he's a keynote speaker. I had the opportunity to share the stage with him at, at a recent event, uh, Amped, Amped for Change, Leaders Amped for Change. Published 30 plus books. He's the co-founder of the nonprofit organization, the Keep Smiling Movement. And I need his smile because people tell me, Austin, you need to smile more. You're more serious. Okay, I'm going to work on my smile. But it really helps with uh, mental, and, mental and dental health organization. I love that. That saves lives. And he's been honored as America's most influential business connector and entrepreneur of the year. Uh, this man has headed for, continues to head for big things. So please, everybody, I need you to stand up. I, stand up and help me welcome Ken Rashawn. Ken, not you. Oh. Ken, you're supposed to sit down. <laughs> he doesn't take direction really well. No, I'm kidding. He's, uh, I think it very well, too well sometimes. 
So Ken, I got to tell you right off the bat, I'm going to have some fun with you. So first of all, you sent me the keep smiling cards, right? But my only problem is you sent me one that was upside down. <laughs> and then you sent me another one that is like extra long. Was that like the, the extra, is there something special about that one or? Well, the, at least I didn't send you the one that sometimes we accidentally send people. And it's the one that says, keep miling. That is, that's been a, a big faux pas on our part. Okay. Well, then at least I got the keep smiling ones. Well, I'm glad that we had this time together. You we, uh, had an opportunity. Well, I actually met you in Philadelphia and I didn't even realize, right. We met like a couple of years ago and thanks to Dr. Andrea, because, you know, through her and, and my connecting with her, I've been able to get closer to you and the things that you're doing. So that that's been a blessing. So I just want to give her a shout out as well. So, Amen. so let's talk about you with the time that we have. I, I want to, I, I always like to go into the history because I want, because it provides context, you know, it gives a context of where you came from. And I want the listener to get that. Like I want the listener to understand because a lot of times people see people and you go through their, their resume they're like, Oh, wow, that person. But let's talk about it. Like what, you know, where does this all start for you? Well, the first thing I do want to address is that when you showed that, that time glass and the sand going through, you know, when you turn it sideways with the sand in it, for some reason I see a bikini. I mean, I don't, there's something. So I, I could see that. Yes. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying there. And, you know, sun is winding down, so it's still there's still uh, bikini season. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so uh, to answer your question, um, what was the question again? It was a, I just see, like, you know, like, like when you think back, look, look at where you are today and, and, yeah. and all the things. Because I, I went through a process today with, with Dr. Andrea, actually, and we forget the gold and the heart and the books and the how many books did you, you know, how many books do you have out, right? How many smiles are you responsible for? We got to get those numbers. But where did it start? Where did you go, man, I, I got to make a change? Unfortunately, it was, uh, it was my mom being diagnosed with dementia and me having a wake-up call that, hey, this is my biggest cheerleader and she's, she might be going away. And I decided to be a caregiver, gave up my career, much like you did. It was a wake-up call. And I, I decided to give, be a caregiver with my dad for three years and during that time, I just had a lot of epiphanies about what life is about or what I wasn't doing to actually see how big life could be. And uh, when she passed, I decided to do my first book because I was a promise. Second thing I promised myself is I would everything I did in my life time wise would be with purpose. It would be honoring that life is precious. And the third thing was that anything I did would be a tribute to her. So my very first focus was to um, volunteer to help with women empowerment events. And they ended up going in directions of domestic violence. Uh, being speakers, uh, just large powerhouse uh, conventions of women. And I think that's where it all started. And if it wasn't for my mom getting to dementia, as some people say when they have a horrific childhood and they create this amazing life, if she didn't get dementia, I don't know if we'd be on this call today. I don't know if I would have actually waken up. Wow, man, that, that touches my heart um, because I have a similar, you know, similar story with my dad. Yes. So you know, uh, that really hits home because I, I look at, you know, and I think that it's important. Your story is important because there's someone that's going through something and they, and, and you could probably project back when you were in it, you don't, you're, you're thinking, at least most people are not thinking this has value and is meaningful. You're thinking why? And now right. you look back. So you have the luxury today to see the why, look at the why, the legacy in your life because of your what happened to your mother, you know, and that I think that's God's, I think that's God's design, though, Austin. I think that if your parents lived, let's say, two hundred years, you might waste one hundred and fifty of them before you woke up. And so I think that the design that God gave us is that life is finite, and that there are new children that will be seated as your future, your legacy, if you choose them to be, and so you have the youth awakening you to energy again, and you have the elderly reminding you that you need to do the most you can with your life because you're still here. And I think it's a beautiful gift that we get from both sides. If you listen, though, I, I, you, you, you listen. listen. Yeah, you have to listen. 
you know, and that's why I'm, I'm like dropping this down. Say that again. And take action. You, it's listen and take action. Yeah. So there had to be something in you, Ken, where you said, I need to listen because let's face it. I mean, a lot of things happen for people. And that's why we want you to share this show because there's people that things happen and they don't have that. They haven't answered the call. They think they're broken. They think, why is this happening to me? And we want this to be, to be that call for them to, to hear Ken's story, to pick up one of the books. And uh, I'm just going to share. We got it. I'll just share two more things while you're doing that real quick. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I'll share that I think 75% of people based on some statistics I've heard over and over again, don't know why they're here. And it's a great question to examine because if you don't know why you're here, how are you going to enjoy the journey? How are you going to make a difference while you're here? And how are you going to feel fulfilled? That's one part. And the second part is if you don't know why you're here, you're probably not in joy. And if you're not in joy, you're probably missing what God really wanted for you, which is to have a life you love and you get to design it. it it's that's the cool thing about it. Anyone that's come from broken homes, backgrounds that are horrific and they create this life they love. They took control. They actually said, I have the power. I have the power. And then there's people that have the most phenomenal lives and they're not happy and they don't realize they have the power to choose that life. And that's a great segue. Like where, where would you suggest somebody start? Because a, a lot of times it's pe people understand it logically, but they're emotionally so far away. Like, Oh my God, it's easy for you to say, Dr. Smiley, you know, it's easy for you. Right. right. But how do you connect with that person? You know, you know, I just did an exercise with my son. He, we were in Rhode Island and he wasn't really digging the Rhode Island scene. He didn't think it was up to the level of Machu Picchu because he had been to Machu Picchu a month before. And I said, you know, you could be really happy right now. And he wasn't really buying into it. And I said, you know, Kenny, what would you want really, if you want to do anything right now, what would you want to do? And he's nine years old. And he said, fortunately, something I could actually give him, which was to go to Target. I said, if we went to Target and you got anything you wanted in Target, what would you pick? And he picked a $60 box of Pokemon cards. And, you know, fortunately, Pokemon cards are not $1,000 or $15,000, but that was a manageable amount. It was an expensive lesson for me to teach him in one sense, but it was really an important lesson. And I said, you just chose that box of Pokemon cards. And if you didn't choose them, that's not yours. But I just asked you what you wanted to choose. Would you like them? He says, yes, I would. And I said, see the power of choosing? I said, if you can remember 10 things in sequential order, which I hope I can get them right right now because this is about two weeks ago. But if you can remember these 10 things and you apply three of them for the next three days, I'll buy them. I'll buy those Pokemon cards for you because I choose to buy them for you because you're choosing three of the 10 things you're going to learn right now. And if you don't choose any of them and you're at zero choices that are positive, you buy them. You buy them for 60 because that'll be your choice too. And so <clears throat> the first one was choose to be positive. The second one was choose to be nice. The third one was choose to be happy. The fourth one was choose to be a, uh, abundant. The fifth one was choose to be a whole lot of love. The sixth one was to choose to be chivalrous. The seventh one was to choose to be kind. The eighth one was choose to be fun. The ninth one was choose to be patient. And the 10th one was choose to be better. And we had a mnemonic, we had a mnemonic system and he could pick any of the three 10. I didn't care, but he had to know the 10. He just could, he could, he could choose any of the three at all time. And he wanted, I mean, he, he is so amazing right now because something happened a couple of days ago that was actually a bit of a challenge and it was, and he could have really fallen out. And I said, Kenny, you're very composed. And he says, yeah, I chose it. I chose it, dad. At a nine year old. I mean, that's, that's so, pretty powerful. <laughs> so one thing that I'm going to highlight right now is we're going to ring the bell for that. Those 10 things. We're going to ring the bell for your son. This is the Liberty bell. And we awesome. ring the Liberty bell to highlight moments like this. And I'm going to put this on. And uh, Ken, I got a I got a surprise for you here in a moment. We got a couple minutes, but I'm going to give you the stage, and uh, I'm going to duck out for a minute. And I just want you to speak to that somebody right now who is is feeling like a breakthrough is far away. Like, okay. speak directly to them. Like, <clears throat> like maybe they're in that tough spot, and I'm sure. going to just you speak from the heart, and let's just reach them. The floor okay. is yours. Thank you, sir. So to that person that needs the one secret that has helped me get through challenging times, tough times, pandemic times when I lost uh, just about 100 percent of my income, 99 point something percent. I chose one that I didn't give to my son, and it's gratitude. And when you are in gratitude, 
there's something that chemically happens to your brain. You emit and give off all kinds of lovely chemicals. And I have a book that I will give this person absolutely for free. You just have to text or email and we can do that at the end of the show, but it's called a dose of hope and it stands for dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins of hope and hope is hold on pain ends. And I think that so many of us, when we don't have perspective of how life can turn out for us in the better, we get in this really bad, gloomy space. And these stories, and Austin is actually one of the new authors in the next uh, chapter, or the next unit, it's uh, part six, share that they went through stuff. And they went through stuff that was so dark or so uncertain or so confusing. And had they not had hope and had they quit, they wouldn't have the life that they have and love. Uh, some examples of people in here are Frank Shankowitz, who created 500,000 wishes, 500,000 wishes through uh, the um, Make-A-Wish Foundation. So Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, has given 500,000. I mean, I've seen Frank speak at events where someone wakes up, I mean, stands up and says, I'm a wish kid. And I'm blown away by that type of impact in the world. And so I say to you, if you need hope, Dose of Hope is for you, through you, through Austin, and you may find that that is all you're missing. A person that doesn't have hope is typically announced as not moving and giving up and potentially even living in the dead. And so hope brings you to life. You're, uh, mute. you're mute, Austin, I think. That's because I was, you know, I was celebrating back here. No, um, well, I'm glad you didn't have the bell so loud that I couldn't think. So thank you for that. Yeah, there you go. But I, I was, I'm really excited to be a part of that project, A Dose of Hope. And I know we're, you're still filling this project, correct? We are looking for, we have 250 plus authors and we are still looking for up to, we, we stop at 500. So that is the end of the project. And, and we can go right to the keepsmilingmovement.com right here at the bottom of the yep, screen. Yep, you can apply to it. You can uh, download the book for free. You can connect with me personally. Um, happy, happy to talk to people that are inspiring the world. And here is something for Austin that uh, is, I don't hear this very often, but people that are offered to be in books, do you know what they are basically offered to do? Tell their story. No, pay. Oh, pay. <laughs> yeah, they're offered to pay. They're offered to pay. So in other words, it's not. this is not that gift. This is a gift where if you have been doing great things in the world, we'd like to honor you. We'd like to give you the gift of reaching millions and millions of people. And we are footing the tab. We are not paying. We're not going to have you pay a penny for being a good person, providing hope and creating smiles. And we have something that we measure that by. You want to hear what it is, Austin? Yes, please. SPH. What are your smiles per hour? So if your smiles per hour are high, you have probably every chance of getting in this book, receiving the gift certificate from Austin. You just need to say Flashpoint and... Uh, that you would like to be part of Dose of Hope, and we would be happy to hear your story. Thank you so much. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. And for me, I just got to look in the mirror. Someone said, look in the mirror if you want to increase your smiles per hour. So I just look in yeah. the mirror. <laughs> you, you do need to smile when you look in the mirror, though, because when you yes. smile, it, it recycles. And it's a very, you know, uh, I'll, tell us, I'll tell you a secret to the people that are potentially a little depressed or a little down or just don't have, they don't think they have a reason to smile. So, if you think about something you're grateful for, maybe it's your health. Maybe it's the fact you can see. I, I, I'm actually working for Gail Hamilton. She's blind. And in meeting and working with her, I have grown to just be grateful for my eyes. Just my eyes make me light up now. My son always makes me light up. And my son just received a, a letter from the president. I don't know if it's going to show up on this, but I'm just going to show that my lovely son I received a letter from President Biden, President Biden last month. And that's a reason to be grateful. But here's the thing. Here's what's cool about if you can't find a reason to be grateful, I ha still have a secret on how you can smile and trick yourself into be happy. And I mean, tricking yourself to be happy is not a mean trick. That's a great trick. <laughs> so here we go. If your brain is saying, I am unhappy, and then go ahead and smile anyway. Smile, like really smile. And like Austin said, smile in the mirror. Smile, smile. Practice smiling. And it becomes a habit. But here's what happens. The brain goes down and says, there's something happening down here. Why are we smiling? Oh, 
we must be happy. And so it starts kicking and it actually cycles. And then you walk out the house, you're smiling and people smile back at you and it's recycling, recycling. And next thing you know, your phone's ringing and people want to work with you. Someone says, you know, I, I think you, something's changed. You look really attractive. And next thing you know, you're attracting all kinds of relationships. So it's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's a beautiful thing. Plus your creativity goes high. When you're smiling, your brain is kicking into being more powerful, being more creative. It's amazing. You solve problems quicker, everything. Everything happens. Your biochemistry fires. So if you missed this, go to the keepsmilingmovement.com. If you're in my circle, mention Flashpoint. Ken is putting this project together. Let me grab this. I think this is Dr. Andrew here. Joseph I'm going to give a gift away, too. You're going to give a gift away, too. All right. Thank you. Science Hold Smiles. Up. It's a book, so, Science okay. Smiles. Yep, they can so, have anything they hold up. Yep. So how do they get a, get that gift? Um, I think the best way would be for them to either go through you, I'll send you the ebook copies, but the second best way would probably be um, go on Facebook. I have a, I have a Ken Roshan, Dr. Smiley, Ken, Ken Smiley Roshan. That would probably be the best way. Yeah. Message me. Um, you, have a, you have a great audience, right? You have an audience that's just wonderful? Oh, my gosh, yeah. We okay, like if they're great. If they're great, I'm going to do something that uh, shows I believe in you and I believe in them. I will give my I'll give my cell number. That's kind of a daring way of saying I trust. Oh, that's 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 trust. Are you sure? Yep, I am. All right, so I can put it up on the screen if you want. Yep, two zero two. Two zero two. Seven zero one. Seven zero one. Zero nine one one. Zero nine one one. And there you go. I'm excited. I, I uh, We have lots to get to. I'm going to put, oops, let me edit this so I can say, this is Ken up on the screen. Or uh, Dr. Smith. Hey, smile go. right now. Just put a smile. Like, you know what? Say, crap's going wrong. <laughs> Something didn't go right this morning. Like, sometimes you you just need to trick your brain. Right, right, Ken? You just talked about the biochemistry. Well, yeah, and then the other thing is, you know, there's something that we were talking about earlier about the secrets God gives us, and it's that kids don't know there's stress in the world. So they smile like three or 400 times a day. And as adults, I've looked at the pattern. What we do is we take life so serious, we forgot that you're, you're allowed to enjoy it. So there you go. Enjoy life like a kid. You know what? And I'll give you a perfect example. When you go to get a, a government identification photo, they're <laughs> gauging it on a frown. They don't, if you smile, sometimes they won't take it because they can't read your face because people walk <laughs> around like this. And I yeah. like I have these lines here because I was always focused, bro. Like, come on, let's go. And so, you know, I'm cognizant of that, though. I'm aware of it, you know. So well, we're, we gonna had we're gonna take a little tiny little bit of a break. It's I'm gonna share story. because we have a uh, an event coming up, Flashpoint 4.0. I'm gonna share the trailer. I have a special guest host. I want everybody to give a shout out for Mandy Robinson who couldn't be here today. Uh, just send her some love if you could, please. Just send her some love. We miss her as being a part of the show. She adds so much, but we have more surprises. Ken, I, when we come back, I want you to think about a moment, a moment. You looked out the window, you got a phone call, something that you can pinpoint where you, you really felt change. Then we're going to bring on our second guest to meet Ken real time. And we're going to bring on our guest host. So give me a minute here as I cue, cue with the tech and we are going to, we're going to make this happen. We are going to make this happen right now because that's what we do. We're going to share the screen. All right, Ken, I'll see you in a little bit. of validation and clarification flashpoint manifesting the moment of your big so we had a little bit of a sound issue but we're working on that so i'm gonna try again. my life is over these words came out of my mouth
The thing I needed to change was the way I looked at myself. In the midst of all the chaos, confusion that you might go through, there's a moment of validation and clarification. Flashpoint, manifesting the moment of your big breakthrough. And that's the beautiful thing about Flashpoint is that it happens in us first. And that was the birthplace of Flashpoint. Flashpoint is like coming in like a, like a flash saying, no, there's more. Information's everywhere. Experience is rare. Enter Flashpoint. They so desire. They want to win in their lives. They want to be And we provide that environment for them. Most recently, I launched the Rocky campaign. Sure enough, I'm doing these videos every day. People start to need me. I have guests literally at the Rocky steps and we're pouring out these informational content. And next thing you know, it gave birth to the Rocky experience, which we've added to Flashpoint. And now we just completed the first ever Rocky experience with the Flashpoint Live Immersion. They, they want to climb these steps in physical form as a metaphor for their own lives. All right, everyone, we're back. Little tech issues, but we navigate through and we are going to bring on our guests. I want to invite you to get your ticket for Flashpoint. This is shaping up to be a fantastic event. The folks that are coming in, the opportunity for you, whether you're looking to gain more exposure, you're looking to reinvent your life, you're looking to, for support, you're looking to connect with folks, you're looking, to, looking for more clarity. We are building a documentary around this. We have a, a spotlight series. We're doing a summit on September 18th, all connected to this event, October 7th, 8th, and 9th. So I'm going to put that link here so you can take advantage of this. I want to encourage you as much as possible to take advantage of this space because we have people coming in from all over the United States. We have virtual folks that are going to be listening in on this as well. And I know it's going to be a global event. So your breakthrough 2022.com, you can still get an in-person ticket. You can still uh, look into the spotlight series that we're doing to highlight you. So there's a lot of opportunity to come. So I'm going to bring Mr. Dr. Ken Rashawn, Dr. Smiley back on here right now with me. He was just getting hair and makeup, so he's good now. There we go. So welcome back, Ken. You're on mute, so I want to make sure I let you know that. And then we are going to bring on our guest host, Dana Banks. Are you ready, Dana? Dana's ready. So Dana, yeah, I'm already. I had the technical issues. There I am. Hello. We keep showing up. Like I just keep showing up. I don't care what the technology does. We just keep showing up. Amen. So Dana, before we get to our next guest, I just want to. Were you able to listen to any of the uh, interviews so far? Yeah, I'm. I'm really intrigued with uh, the brain chemistry um, of a smile. Uh, that that's new to me. <laughs> so that's um. And having children, I can I can definitely agree that they're they're so jovial they're always smiling because they don't know stress so that's very true so that's about all i caught so far okay well we're glad you're here to get the second segment so ken we got two things before we get to our guest one i want to hit your did you think about the the moment when you felt that like we call it the, the light bulb moment like aha I did. And uh, I want to say I didn't think of it. So that would be an embarrassing gap. But I really did think about it. OK, so I did. you ready? Yes, please. So um, there are times in life when we're just moving and we don't stop to actually think about what we're doing with all these moving and actions. And the pandemic was a very interesting blessing because on March 20th of this year, I had two epiphanies that really happened that year. So I had two flashpoints in one year. One was just the fact that 99.5% of my income was removed, annihilated. I actually had to look up the word annihilate. I didn't know there was H's and N's in there, or double N's and things like that. So you can say a word, but when you have to write to people, my income has been annihilated. You have to know how to spell it. So, um, 
my wife asked me, we just lost almost everything. Every single event that we had, almost 400 events canceled, rescheduled, but all gone. They're not here. And she looked at me and she said, uh, and I said, yeah, I know. And she says, well, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. And then she says, you don't seem wor worried at all. I said, I'm not. And then she says, why? And I said, I don't know. And I want to tell you why I share it. That, that's exactly what happened. But I was in a state of calm. I was in a state of receiving. God, what do you have that's the gift that's coming from this massive awakening? Because there's going to be something great that comes out of this. And because of that attitude, really amazing things happened. My, did, my son did eight books. I got my doctorate. I pivoted into publishing at the highest level. I mean, we, I have potentially a million dollar company right now for my publishing because of that pivot and that ability to actually see that that was gold. Not That was one. Number two, and this is why we know each other so well, is on December 4th, I got my very first eviction notice, December 4th of 2020 for my studio, because even though I pivoted and I had all this great stuff happening, I wasn't making what I used to make. And so I couldn't pay for my studio. And everyone said, dump it. It's 3000 a month you're losing. But when I got my eviction notice, I prayed to God and God gave me a beautiful download. And this is the download. And I'm promising you this really did happen. Dose of hope. And uh, I, tell, uh, I tell everyone, if I didn't get the eviction notice, yeah, without the eviction notice, without the eviction notice, there was no prayer. Without the prayer, there was no download. And I, I'm telling you, Austin, I have had my life just have the highest karma level because when I did the hope book, there was no answer to how I was going to get money. It just was told to me that that's the answer, hope. That's it. Wow. A dose of hope. And let me just grab this again to participate in a dose of hope. That that's what I was looking for, Ken. That is it. That is the seed of a flashpoint in the midst of it. We say it's a peace that passeth all understanding. It doesn't make logical sense. Something in you knows. And I'm so glad that we captured that. I'm so glad that we captured that. So um, we're going to pivot to Ke Kerry here in a moment. Kerry, has been patient. We're these shows, they always, we plan them and then they go off plan and then we have fun. We smile and say, and we say, I don't know why, but it's going to work out just like we're doing right now. It always so, does. But I got, I got a, a riddle for you. What can you keep after giving to someone? Uh, a cold? No, but this is a... <laughs> <you're ready. laughs> Look. Tell me, what is it? A riddle book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I was like, I gotta get him with a riddle. So this is number one eleven, and and the, and the and Dana, do you know what it is? What can you keep after giving to someone? Um, uh, I don't want to answer that, but I'm gonna guess a smile. How about a smile? A smile, yes, a smile. Okay, that's a good one. That's not the answer. Um, but does anybody in the chat know before I give the answer? What can you give that? Let's bring Carrie on right now. I'm going to bring Carrie on. Carrie, are you ready? So I'm going to bring her on and I'll give her a formal introduction. You're on mute, but do you know the answer to this riddle? Okay. If somebody types it in, type it in. One million, no, one billion dollars if someone could get this. I mean, happiness, I would think you could give happiness to someone and yeah. Yeah. This is a beautiful one. I love this. This is great. So what you what what you can keep after giving it to someone is your oh, word. See, your word. word. Nice. Wow. I, I love that. that. I love that. <laughs> my son would have got that. Ironically, my son would have had it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's his book. book. Yeah. Well, well the thing is, is he wasn't allowed to put anything in the book unless he could remember it. I told him you have to remember it in case you go on media. So, oh yeah, it's a shout out for for Ken who had had an opportunity to meet recently, which really really neat neat young man uh, with a bright future. But we're going to transition for time. But um, Carrie, just want to give you a chance. You heard the beginning of that story. So before we learn about your story, is there anything you would reflect back to what you heard so far from Dr. Smiley here? Um, I just wanted to say it was really interesting. Just learning, I think that um, just this the whole aspect about the smile was just really interesting. So I'm, yeah, it was, I loved your, I loved your chat. So it was great. And I wrote your phone number down because I'm going to, going to follow up with you. <laughs> yeah. You do. Yeah. So, uh, Carrie, Carrie has a story that we can't get into the full story right now because it is so deep and, and, and heart touching. 
going through abuse that you can't even comprehend, which we know that abuse is more prevalent than we know or hear about, right? Abuse is more prevalent than we know or hear about because a lot of time it's a silent battle. It's a battle that people go internally and they don't know. They lose sometimes what's real and what isn't. And do I stay? Do I go? Do I love? What? And we can lose ourselves. And so uh, Carrie has an incredible story, but she's turned all this into a business where not, not directly, but where right now she's helping influencers do better with social media. You know, how many of you are solopreneurs? You got a book like Ken and you need to attract more of that ideal audience. So Carrie has dedicated herself to this space. We're going to hear more about that. So I just want to welcome you, Carrie, to the show today. And we're eager to learn more. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm excited to be here. And uh, I actually got to talk to Dana earlier this morning. So it was great to connect with her. But um, yeah, just uh, just to kind of just give a quick synopsis. I, uh, my, my story really starts back in 03. I got married and uh, I've, uh, you know, I thought I was marrying the person of my dreams. And uh, it was It was a very, uh, it turned into a very tumultuous situation. I'm, uh, uh, I wish him nothing but the best, but it was just a, it was just a horrible, horrible uh, situation for me. And um, it was very trying, but what I think for me in 2014, I had a bit of a turning point where I experienced a ton of health issues. I was start, I started getting sick. I started having uh, opportunity or times where I was struggling to, um, you know, figure out what was wrong. I was having trouble with digestion, GI stuff. And, and so I just, you know, the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. I ended up finding out that I had several autoimmune diseases. Um, I was hospitalized. I had several surgeries. Um, and then in 2018, I just, I got to the point where I couldn't really keep my nine to five job and I needed to start something else. So I decided to go ahead and begin my entrepreneurial uh, career. And so I started my own business in 2018. Uh, It was a social media company. And within my first two to three months, I made my first 15 K through, through doing that. And so it was, um, that was a big milestone for me. And I, I, um, my family has, I have a lot of entrepreneurs in my family. Um, my dad is an entrepreneur, my grandfather. Um, so it was great to be able to follow in some of the footsteps of my family members. Um, so in 20, like I said, in 2018, I started my company, uh, my social media company, and I was able to help several different, several business owners with social media and just keeping that visibility, that strong visibility for their audience and everything. Um, I did graphics, graphic design, and, um, and just, uh, just really helping them to have a strong online presence. Uh, in 20, in 2019, I started working for a business coach and, uh, I worked for him for, uh, three years and it was, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to, um, you know, really learn a lot a lot about uh, social media and a lot about Facebook. And so I really gained a strong knowledge of the Facebook algorithm and just how Facebook operates and, and everything. And so that kind of became my, that kind of became my strong suit. I really got really strong with, uh, with Facebook. And, um, and then in uh, 2022, in June of 2022, I partnered with one of my really good friends, uh, with um, Genovics and uh, became the, I got named the COO of Genovics. And um, so we've been working together uh, for the past few months and it's been a great opportunity for me just to be able to, again, help with social media, but also just help with, um, you know, helping business owners to implement strategies, systems, processes, uh, CRM management, um, you know, any a different. A like I that. want to jump. I want to jump in for a moment because mm-hmm. you're sharing so much, and I just want you know to capture your story because mm-hmm. what like I, I was talking about like how Dr. Ken helps people bridge the gap, right? 
And I'm just looking at where, like, I read your full story, uh, uh, you know, and, and where, what you been through to spare the details, but to go from there. And what did you just tell me recently just happened to you? And, and, and we just keep it real here. So that you, like, you're just going to keep it real. What, what happened to you in the past couple of months? What, what did you just do to be here today, to be in the city you're in, to be here, to be able to talk today? I left in the middle of the night. What, when was that? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was in December. So in December, okay. You left mm-hmm. in the middle of the night. You didn't know where you were going. I knew I was coming. To where, I knew I was going to where I was going. Mm-hmm. But you, but you, you had to like just go. and. I just packed figure- a bag. I packed a bag. I put the bag in my friend's, in my friend's truck. The person that I was with um, was... Um, uh, more verbally abusive. Um, but I put my, I put the, um, I put a bag of clothes in the, um, in his, uh, truck and he told me he was going to keep it for me for when I was ready to go. And you and left. so I, and so it was actually right after my birthday, I got in, I got a plane ticket and, uh, came out here. And you left and literally you're starting a new life. You're mm-hmm. starting a new business. So think about that. Like, I just want, that's an incredible journey. Did you have a moment, a breakthrough moment where you said, that's it. Like, I, I like we just talk, heard from Ken's story. Do you recall like where you hit that threshold and you're like, like, again, it's a moment, right? Cause it, it's, there's a, there's thoughts and then there's a moment, right? There's a, there's a moment where you say no more, like I'm making a change, not tomorrow, not later today. Like, do you have a moment that you remember? I do. Yeah. I mean, I think one, I think one thing was I, I wanted to stop the cycle because this was the second time it had happened. And I think it got to the point where, um, that I wanted to, um, I didn't want, I no longer wanted to be a victim. I wanted to be a survivor. And I, one of my, my best friend, he's out in Chino and he's, uh, he constantly is reminding me that I'm not a victim of my circumstances and that I'm, I'm a survivor. And so I try to correct myself a lot, you know, telling people that, you know, cause so many people say they're a victim of domestic violence. I'm not a victim of domestic violence and I'm a survivor. And, and I'm, um, my story is going to be impactful to many women. Your story is impactful. Let's, let's, can, can we smile? Can we capture this? Let's get a smile here. Let's go. I want to see your best smile right now. Here we go. Smile big. Congratulations, Carrie. You Thank are, you. you are in the middle of doing it. This is an, an amazing time. Um, Thank you. Dr. Ken, what are you hearing? I uh, just love to give you a chance to reflect back on this. I, I can't put myself where Carrie was, but I will just say that I have seen, heard, and really uh, felt for a lot of people who are in victim mentality. And unfortunately, if they don't give themselves the power, they can't remove themselves from it. And mm-hmm. just Carrie, go from you step from victim to survivor, now step into thriver, which is leader. And that is going to empower you to really have a life you love. Because right now you're getting past it, which I applaud you. But take take harness of people that really need you to be a leader now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're and you're doing that. You're part of the Connected Leaders Academy with Jose, and mm-hmm. I, I want to give folks. So I'm I'm bringing that up because this is somebody who's hungry, hungry mm-hmm. to serve, hungry to transform, hungry to change her life, and she's using social media to help people get their social media message out there. And we are working to try to get Carrie to Philadelphia for Flashpoint 4.0. We're working on that. But I'm going to share your contact info right now to uh, to, to share. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I just want to say what, what she's doing is actually a different version of what we're doing. We, we put on the back of our cards that we amplify goodness, and that's what she's doing with her social media. Your social media is helping people get the word out so they're not a secret. When you're not a secret, you actually have a chance of being successful. So good. Thanks, Ken, for that. Let me grab a couple shares. I, our audience has been very patient with me as we navigate. I'm, I'm without Mandy today, so I'm doing the best I can here. But let me just grab Gordon's on here, and he's just raving about you, Curry. You know, <laughs> He's my number one fan. Humble <laughs> spirit for all that she's been through and accomplished. And as you know, you know now today, this lesson is yours. You know that. 
you know that and you're doing it. Mad respect for her. We got mad respect for you. We got great respect for you. We got great respect for you. Carrie is a complete and total awesome sauce. That's uh, Gordon's <laughs> expletive. <laughs> Long bearded guy. His show's tomorrow at 12 noon. He took my old Flashpoint spot. Can you believe this guy? We used to be Flashpoint Friday, 12 noon. And so we had to make way for Gordon because it's the long bearded guy. <laughs> but he's saying he's absolutely your number one fan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So I want to just, um, if you could just quickly, just a short, what can you do to somebody? What, how can you help somebody with their social media? Um, so I can, I can create a social media strategy plan. I can put together a strategy or social media marketing, uh, marketing plan. I usually, what I, what I usually put together is a content calendar, kind of putting together like what, what you're going to do throughout the week. And, uh, I'm pretty strict with that. <laughs> um, and, um, I, I, uh, like I said, Facebook is my strongest platform. So I, uh, we, with Genovix, we work through a CRM. So it's, uh, the CRM is kind of like a one-stop shop. So I do, so I do all the social media through the Genovix, uh, CRM platform that we have. And so, uh, the scheduling and, and then I also do the graphics and, uh, you know, put all that together. Um, and, um, but I, I can help with Facebook group growth. I can help with Facebook followings, engagement. Uh, I usually like for people to uh, commit to about three months because it does take Excellent. about three months to kind of get that um, rhythm going. So uh, it takes about three months to kind of get that strong rhythm. But uh, I, um, I'm excited to you know, be able to help so many people. And I think that social media is such an amazing tool. Um, but I, you know, um, LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram are probably my three strongest platforms. Uh, I'm not, I don't really do Twitter and um, TikTok. I'm still kind of, still kind of. Okay. Like, well, <laughs> you, just said, you do things that maybe other people are not good at to help, like Ken said, to amplify their message because it's not so much, Think about it. You know, yes, we want followers. Yes. I mean, that's what I want more followers. But you want true engagement. You want to reach the people that are going to resonate with your message. That's going to help them, just like we're doing here with Flashpoint. I want to I don't I don't need a million followers. If, if it gets there, great. But I want to reach the person who hears Ken's story today, who hears Carrie's story today and just and gets a dose of hope mm -hmm. and gets a dose of hope and says there's there's something here that's changing. So this, this looks like your friend here. Uh, Emily. Oh, Emily, she just joined CLA. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, yeah. Emily. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, that's here. my girl. <laughs> yeah. So this has been an awesome show. We have about five minutes left, and it went completely different than I ha had thought, but I I'm feeling pretty good about this. I just ask that you share a part of this. Hey, Mandy, we're giving you lots of love. If you could, Mandy's our co-host. She's usually here. And uh, she couldn't make it today, but we're, we're thinking about you, Mandy. We're looking forward to you coming back. So thank you so much. So let's uh, just to round this out. We um, what what let's give some final comments. I don't care what it is. I don't even care. Well, you had showed cards at the beginning. And, you know, if if anyone wants these cards, believe it or not, they actually do remind you to smile, because if you're not smiling, it says keep smiling. You actually start to smile. And if you are smiling, it keeps you smiling. But um, we had had a little bit of an issue because we mailed some of the cards out to Austin. They were upside down uh, printed and he was able to figure it out. But do you know there's a lot of people in Australia that didn't know what the heck we were saying? So we had to make a card for them. You know that, right? Keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the people in Jamaica got pissed because they were like, what the heck does all this mean? So we, of course, had to make that one, too. I want some of those cards. You're going to yeah. get some of those cards. Carrie, where are you located? Where are you, what area are you in? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. We, can, we The mail goes out there. We'll get some keeps on. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and fill out the application. They need to come to your event. By the way, anyone that comes to your event, we can actually get them in the Key Smiling book. We have 
all these lovely books of Keith Smiley. Whoa, hold on a second. Yeah, come on now, come on now. Hold on now. <laughs> hey, we're making the Philadelphia book too. You know that, right? We need to get that the Philadelphia, Philadelphia book. book. Yes. We're, we're, we're so <laughs> close, by the way. Can you, hold that, can you hold that book back up again? What did it say? Oh, shift yeah. happens. Okay. Shift happens. And it does. It does, Sherry. Shift does happen. Because if you're not smiling and you smile, you just shifted something. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Ken is is if you're coming to the Flashpoint event, you got a great chance of being in the Keep Smiling book. It and it's complimentary. Yeah, isn't Dr. Andre gonna be there too? Yes. Jose is mean, gonna be there. Jose is gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Marlon Mueller, farm boy to multimillionaire. Um I mean just got, that's a lot of value. That's a lot of value. <laughs> Yeah. And are you are you going to be at the Flashpoint event? Are you definitely going to be there? I, I oh, believe okay. I am. I think it's on my calendar, so I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Are you going to be there? I'm working. I'm working on trying to okay. be there. We're, no, we're not, work, we're not working. We are going to create it. We're going to create it. <laughs> okay. I said that to you yesterday. I don't care how. Forget the how. Get the how out of there. Get it out. You just I, told, I told Austin, I said, I used to live in Philly. I used to, I used to run up and down the Rocky Steps with my dad. Well, there you go. Woo! It's a sign. It's a sign. Let's, do it. Let's mm -hmm. do it. This has been a fantastic episode. You still, we have a couple minutes left. You want to sing? You want to dance? Ken, you want to sing a song? Well, I'm going to encourage. Uh, so Carrie said something that I hear people say, and I just want to say, I don't doubt that Carrie's going to call me or contact me to, especially to help her get to Philly. But I actually am. <laughs> just no, just be careful when you when someone gives you a number and you want to take action. It's actually funny, but the difference when you write it down and doing it is actually probably a second. So if, if I get a number from someone, I actually text them. And I say, just texted okay. you. And the reason I do that is because I may lose that paper. I may forget something happened. And so I just want to say, Carrie, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you, but just be careful whenever you get an opportunity that you take action. That's the one thing I'll tell you that's really helped me through this pandemic and really been the I flashpoint know. for me. All right. Thank you so much. And I'm going to send a picture of our, our smiling faces. So I'll send it to I both. dare you. I will. I'm going to send it. So uh, this has been awesome. I just want to encourage everyone. Text it, Austin, since you have his number, since we all have our numbers now. Gary's texted me five <laughs> times yesterday. Did you send me the link? Did I? I love that, though. I love when people are like, ah, Can, can that, that should tell you that I'm going to reach out to you. I you are hungry. I, you, you are absolutely hungry. And uh, I, I just, I'm feeling so great about this show. I'm smiling on the inside, not just on the face. I'm now smiling on the inside. Wow. I hope you will do. And if hey, you're not, you know, if you're there's not, something important you go ahead. Real quick, sorry. I want you to feel a little bit better than you do right now. Ken, final words. It's right at the top of the hour. Go for it. So outside, outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend, but inside a dog, it is impossible to read because it's so dark inside. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. We're so glad you're here today. Start your breakthrough story. Get involved. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Flashpoint TV for more breakthrough stories. Bye for now.